Well, here we are back again, and it's not often that I talk about a Greek tragedy. My goodness, Euripides wrote this how many years ago? About 2,500, I think. 2,500 years ago. Oh, my goodness. Talk about a long-standing playwright. <laughs> Peter Lavinia is next to me, and he plays uh, Talbethia? Talthibius. Talthibius. Okay. I'm not good on Greek. So, <laughs> And then you're paying, you're, uh, Lucy Breyer is playing Hecuba. 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 Okay, good. Oh, I gotta go back and learn my uh, all my alphabet and uh, Greek letters and everything here. To we learn. are performing in English. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. That's good to know. Peter, um, how long have you been acting? Uh, I've been acting on and off since I was in high school, so I'd say about 15 years. Yeah. So you, you're. Yeah. Is this your first Greek tragedy? It is certainly my first Greek tragedy. <laughs> I was like amazed when I found out this is a Greek tragedy. I mean, what makes what makes the, a Greek tra what makes a Greek tragedy? Well, that's the question. Well, <laughs> I mean, this is the birth of our dramatic tradition, um, and it's astonishing that you can be performing a play that was first performed 2,400 years ago. Um, it's performed very differently than it would have been before a Greek audience, um, but it's astonishingly modern in its feel and in its emotions mm -hmm. and its commentary on what happens with, in human life. Um, but, um, I mean, this is, this is not a conventional tragedy in that you see, or what we think of as conventional tragedy, in that you see the fall of noble people, which is kind of the convention. Um, these, the people we see in this play, um, the women we see in this play, have fallen. They have, uh, are suffering and um, are, they, they are the victims of war, essentially. So they were sold as slaves, right? Weren't they? We see yeah. them at the point that they have been captured, they are going into slavery. Um, you know, basically their side lost. And uh, Hecuba, my character, who is a queen, the mother of 19 sons, all of whom have fallen in battle, um, and numerous daughters. Um, we just, her, her entire world has been shattered. Um, yeah. Talphibius now, represents the victors. Now we he represents the victors. Yeah. All of the Trojan You're men are the victor? Are gone. Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm the herald, so I come and I kind of give commands to the, the Trojan women, and I say, you're gonna be sold off to, are given to this uh, noble Greek or, or that you're a slave now, or you're going to be their wife. But you know, I, my character represents the victors, um, and really the way Euripides wrote it as a Greek is very interesting. It looks at the realism, what happens, the horrors of after a war. That these are the civilians, these are people who had to deal with their city being destroyed and with their friends and family dead, and now. Uh, you know, Euripides is saying, you know, there's, there really are no winners or losers here. You know, whichever side you think was good or not, there's always bad things that have happened. Um, so it's, it's very fast. It's an fast. An anti war play in um, a way. I, somewhat, but I think it's more about the realism of war. He's, he's really not saying one side was better than the other. Um, he's simply saying that someone has to deal with the aftermath, and it's usually bad you know, one way or another. And my character really in the play comes in in the beginning and he's very haughty and, and is ordering people around and then he begins to see that the effects that this is going to have, the tragedy is that, you know, these women um, are, are going off and they did nothing wrong. They weren't fighting in the war, but they're going to be sold off and their children are, are hurt or dead. So, you know, he begins to understand that maybe his side isn't, wasn't 100% right and it's not always great to be the victor either. That's really an, an important message. Yeah, I think yeah. so. How many characters are there in the play? Yeah, about eight to ten, I think. I haven't counted, but yeah, I think, about, I think eight. We have um, Greek tragedy, Greek theater generally is written with a chorus character which is can be played by numerous people in our play the chorus of course they're not singing it's it's there. kind of a chanting chorus they are they are the they present the commentary on mm -hmm. what's going on mm -hmm. and um, in this case there are two two trojan women who are the our chorus and um, then a, a number of other major characters there there are only two male characters Talthibius mm -hmm. and Menelaus who um, 
Of course, it was his wife, Helen, who was stolen, which is what starts the entire Trojan yeah, War. Helen, Helen and so Troy. we see him as the victor um, coming and, and basically reclaiming his wife, um, who, if anyone is a villain in this piece, it is Helen. It is, I mean, certainly all of the, the Trojan women blame Helen for being, you know, essentially the slut who started this whole yeah, thing. Yeah, it, yeah, is yeah, her, yeah, yeah. it is her um, um, uh, adultery, really, or her willingness to come or, that, that has made this entire war happen. Is this and, play a part of history? Did this really happen? <laughs> um, you know, that, that's questionable. I mean, we think that the Trojan War happened. Uh, certainly in the 19th century, there uh, were archaeological finds in what's now Turkey that show that there was some kind of a conflict. But, um, you know, this is really based on the Iliad, which was kind of an oral tradition that mm -hmm. happened, I think, maybe 500 years before Euripides wrote. So there's probably something of truth to it. Yeah, but this, I think, this. what's interesting about this, I think, as Lucy said, was that it... Trojan, the Trojan women has become the base for a lot of Western tragedy. So in itself, it's, it's a part of history because Shakespeare draws from it. Everybody draws from it. I think we were talking the other night about how much Shakespeare talks about Hecuba, right? Hecuba is, is uh, throughout the medieval period, actually, in Europe, Hecuba was the image of suffering, mm -hmm. of sorrow. And so it's a, and, 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 and Shakespeare actually uses her several times. In Hamlet, um, when he's talking to the actors, it, the actor is actually performing as Hecuba, and he's talking about how he you know, strikes the air and makes poses and such. Um, but I think what's important for us to understand is that this story is something that to, to Euripides' audience would have been as familiar as mm -hmm. biblical stories are to us. Um, so they know all about Helen. They all know, you know, they, we're talking about their gods, Zeus and Athena and Poseidon. Uh, Athena and Poseidon are actually two of the characters in the play. Um, and and these, these characters, I mean, they're to the, the audience here. They are, are, yes, they're part of their history and also part of their mythology. Um, so um, it, The thing that amazes me the most, listening to, to both of you speak, you feel, I mean, I think you can identify with, I mean, both of you see, appear to identify with the characters in the, in, in the tragedy of war and, and the empathy that you feel for the characters. Even you as a victor sure. feels the empathy towards that character. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, having, you know, come into this, I'd never, like you said, done Greek tragedy before, but you see that all these archetypes, I mean, these are very human characters, the way he wrote, I think why it has endured. So, you know, my character, you know, he comes in, again, a lot, like a lot of people saying, okay, this is great, we won, but then you see what actually happened, you know, and the character says that there's a human cost. Yeah, so. oh, there's no doubt. Where can they see this? Yeah, the performance is at 137 State Street, which is uh, the storefront rehearsal space that Classic Theatre Guild usually uses. It's a very small venue, so we encourage people to get tickets early. Um, we're already sold out for opening night. Okay. And um, the performances are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, okay, I February think we put the, we'll put the 28th dates up there, yeah. through yeah. The, the March 2nd and then March 6th through 9th. Mm -hmm. so, well, um, we encourage you, to, if you've never seen a Greek tragedy, um, check it out. Uh, you know, we, we do talk about the effects of war. This might bring it home, even though it was written 2,400, 2,500 years ago. Uh, it's still apropos. It's too bad that we can't seem to get beyond fighting in our, as we become more civilized, we seem to become less civilized. I'm not sure. But that's just my commentary. <laughs> Nobody well, else's. <laughs> certainly. I mean, one of the things that I think about every time we go through this play mm -hmm. is the people in the world who are experiencing this on a day-to-day -day basis. Exactly. And it makes us realize how fortunate we are that we as Americans, we have never seen war brought to our own no. doorstep. No. no. Well, uh, the Civil War, other than that, you know. That and, was a biggie. <laughs> and even in upstate New York, yeah, that didn't yeah. happen here. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. I mean, yes, I mean, we have certainly sent our sons out to die in war, but we It hasn't have, affected us personally. Yeah, right. That's correct. We have not seen our cities in flame. Exactly. So. Uh, check it out. It's called Trojan Women. 
and it's at, by the Classic Theater Guild. We want to give them credit. They do some incredible work and have uh, received a number of awards for some of their, their plays. Uh, it's at 137. That's over by uh, DSIC office, the Downtown mm -hmm. Schenectady yeah, It's exactly next to that. Yes. Right next to that, near where Madison bags are made, too. So it's in Lower State Street. Check it out. There's plenty of parking in the area. And uh, enjoy a Greek tra tragedy. I, I just, that doesn't quite work, but it seems to. <laughs> Peter Val Lavinia and also um, Lucy Breyer here today. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. It's astonishing that you can be performing a play that was first performed 2,400 years ago. Um, it, it's performed very differently than it would have been before a Greek audience, um, but it's astonishingly modern in its feel and its emotions and its commentary on what happens with, in human life. Um, but it's about 15 years. Yeah, so you, you're, yeah. is this your first Greek tragedy? It is certainly my first Greek tragedy. <laughs> I was like amazed when I found out this is a Greek tragedy. I mean, what makes what makes the, a Greek tra what makes a Greek tragedy? Well, that's the question. Well, <laughs> I mean, this is the birth of our dramatic tradition, um, and. Well, here we are back again, and it's not often that I talk about a Greek tragedy. My goodness, Euripides wrote this how many years ago? About 2,500, I think. 2,500 years ago, oh my goodness. Talk about a long-standing playwright. <laughs> Peter Lavinia is next to me, and he plays uh, Talbethia? Talthibius. Talthibius, okay. I'm not good on Greek, so. <laughs> and then you're paying, you're, uh, Lucy Breyer is playing Hecuba. Hecuba. Hecuba, okay, good. Oh, I gotta go back and learn my uh, all my alphabet and uh, Greek letters and everything here. To we learn. are performing in English. <laughs> yeah. okay, good. That's good to know. Peter, um, how long you've been acting? Uh, I've been acting on and off since I was in high school. So I'd... But, um, I mean, this is this is not a conventional tragedy in that you see, or what we think of as conventional tragedy, in that you see the fall of noble people, which is kind of the convention. Um, these, the people we see in this play, um, the women we see in this play, have fallen. They have.